several months ago, we did an episode where we asked for unique tractor uses. Yeah. And Neil, you replied to that. I did. I thought, well, I have a unique tractor usage. Yeah, this is Neil from Kof Dig Drive DIY on YouTube. Neil's gonna be a superstar, you've heard me say that before. Today we're gonna to install an invisible dog fence. Neil is the expert. I got enough experience to at least be qualified. Let's get started. This is my custom built heavy hitch. Heavy hitch. Yeah, this is a category zero three point hitch. It was uh, the 316, 318 uh, John Deere lawnmowers came with a category zero. You could, you could order that as an option. So all of my attachments have this 5 8 attachment pin. Okay. So it's a 5 8 size rod that's the, uh, the eyelets. Okay. I had a bunch of these dumbbell weights that for whatever reason I wasn't using. Does anybody actually use them? <laughs> those, those systems are really hard to dust. <laughs> so, <laughs> So I thought, well, what a perfect use of some weight. I need some ballast for this. What this does, there's no down pressure on my three-point hitch, obviously. Right. So I need something to get that knife in the ground and keep it in the ground so that it doesn't want to float up. So I found if I really, really weight the hitch down, the knife stays where I want it, and uh, we'll be able to plow it in. Because we're basically, we're using a little miniature cable plow. Not a new concept, but adapted for use with the garden tractor. Cool. Okay, so this is the, this is the knife you use. This is the knife. This, now that looks like an old anhydrous knife where we would put anhydrous ammonia on in the field. You're exactly right. That's exactly what it is. Okay. I've got cousins and relatives that are farmers and these are their throwaways. So when the knives get too worn out for them, they're perfect for me in this application. These come with a tube on them that injects the liquid. Well, it's actually anhydrous ammonia. Yeah, nitrogen. it's liquid. Yep. Yeah. It injects it into the, the path the, that this creates. Well, I took that off because it's too small and a little bit, it's not bent correctly. Put on my own custom tube and route it around so that the wire can be fed through here and follows behind the knife and it seems to work What really diameter well. tubing is this? This is like a... Uh, looks like looks a, a half, half inch, inch ID. Yeah, maybe? a half inch ID. I've installed underground dog fences with this and also I've done a lot of coaxial cable and I actually did the ethernet cable out to my barn here that we're in. Okay, and then that just bolts on right here. Yep, it bolts onto here and we'll bolt it on when we get to the job site because it, uh, it carries too low to, to, to go on the trailer, so. Okay. And then we'll put our spool of wire on here and we'll, we'll see how it works in action. I call this tractor Brutus because it's a brute. It's Brute. brawny and muscular. Okay. The 316 was the smaller of that series back in the day, in the mid 80s, early 90s. What horsepower did the 316 have? The 316 was the was the 18 horsepower Onan. Okay. The same that was in the 318. The 316 didn't have power steering. It only had one set of hydraulic remotes. It only had a single brake instead of individual steer brakes like the 318. Okay. I come into this tractor because it had a bad engine. It was dropped off here uh, because they thought I'd probably want it rather than yeah. send it to the scrapyard. And I put a 25 horsepower Robin Subaru engine in it. That's very dirty right now, but that's why Brutus gets his name because of the 25 horsepower that's... Looks like a two cylinder engine. It is, yep. It's a two cylinder. I had to do a lot of custom fabrication to get it to fit in there. It and looks like it just barely fits. It barely fits. You have to keep this oil cap on there just right so the hood closes. <laughs> but it's a strong running tractor. Okay, 25 horsepower. Robin yeah, Subaru. That's a lot of tractor for, the, for this little frame. Yeah, and with all the weight on there, he will pull more than you think he will. <laughs> <laughs> any, more, any more you want to do? I got to get fuel. I probably ought to grease it up because I have not greased this for hey! a long time. I got something. You do? Yeah. Have you ever seen one of these? I have not. Okay. This is a lube shuttle. Now, it's a different type of grease system than you've used before. The steel part, you think you're taking off, in this case, it doesn't do anything. Oh, it just protects the... Yeah, so that's just, that's just a kind of a protecting thing. And this is a tube. Once a tube's on, you can't ever take them off, right? Without... Right, well, it ruins the whole... Not this one. There's no plunger. Oh. The tube can be removed. If you want to put the tube back in, you just kind of squirt it up there a little bit. Make nice. sure it's sticking out and then it'll prime. And so let's say you want to do a half a tube of this style of grease and you want to use a different... Right. Different. And, you know, everybody says, well, every grease gun I've ever had always leaked, right? They all leak mm -hmm. out the bottom. Not this one. Huh. Right. It's more like uh, a caulk. Yeah, it's more like a tube of caulk. Hmm. And this is a new lithium grease, LI-400. 
it's kind of the end all grease that you're supposed to use. I've recommended some other grease styles for this mm -hmm. one in the past, but the LI400 was just recently introduced in the US. But anyway, that's all yeah. you do. And then you wouldn't have to have that. Keeps it from... It's just, it just helps it from, you know, keeps it from, from being damaged. They come in three different styles. They come in the big, the big long handle, mm -hmm. the pistol grip, and then there's electric version. Oh, nice. So you have to prime it or do anything or? No, it's ready to, it's you ready have to, to run. prime it. Like, cause, cause a lot of times I have to push on the plunger and hold it against my knee. Yeah. And then it squirts out yeah, and then you're all, all over, over yeah. the place. <laughs> no, none of that. All I right. mean, the only part that's going to get greasy is right here on the end. Huh. And then this is a lock and lube on this end. Nice. I do right. have one of those. Now this lock and lube is a little different than the typical one on Amazon in that it's got a metric thread here because this mm. is a metric tube. You can also get a longer whip mm -hmm. hose, uh, but this lock and lube here, I just love this combination. Yeah. Well, let me try that. I, Brutus is getting a real treat here. All I use is the Farm and Fleet store uh, grease. So. Yeah. Lithium. Lube-shuttle.us slash store and use code TWT. You get a 5% discount. Uh, grease or guns, the whole combination. Neil, I say this system is great for somebody who uses just a few tubes a year. Yeah. The, the tubes are a little bit more expensive, but it's, it's no mess, right? Right. So somebody who's using, you know, a thousand tubes a year, you know, it's probably going to be uh, uh, not really worth the cost to them. And they're going to be very familiar with the grease gun anyway. It seems to me like my, my guns leak more after they've set for a while. Yeah, they do. Mine do too. No, I can see what, this would be perfect for for me, really, I mean, other than like the heavy equipment I've got, but for the tractors, this would be perfect because they don't get a lot of grease. But... Right, just a few squirts. Yep. We're getting close to the fun part. Yeah, this looks like fun. You know, I, I like that episode of yours on your daily carry. Do you have, yeah. you have your, uh... yeah. I even have one of your tools. You do? Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> now I know how you come up with all your daily carries. <laughs> So you just did it this way because that's the same way the anhydrous knives mount. That's right. I just built a little attachment that matched up with the holes that were already in the knife. And if the three point hitch would raise up a little bit higher, I wouldn't have to take it on and off all the time. But this also doubles as my ballast for just daily use too. So yeah. in the kit, they send you this real chintzy 20 gauge wire that is not very heavy. And I always take the upgrade route and go with this heavier. Why is that? 18 gauge wire. It has a heavier insulation on it. Uh huh. And it just seems more robust. And I've had, I've had zero failures with this heavier wire. Okay. Whereas I've had a lot more failures with the light wire. Well, how, how have you had a failure? The biggest failure I've had is around here. We have a heavy clay based soil. Okay. And as it dries out in the summertime, it actually forms cracks. Yeah, I've seen that. And it'll it's grab odd. onto the wire and it'll, it'll no stretch kidding. and pull it apart. It will actually break this yeah, wire. It'll break the, the light wire. Wow. Let me show you a comparison real quick. This is the wire that comes with the kit. Oh my goodness. So not only is the wire diameter smaller, the insulation is yeah, the not insulation, even comparison. The insulation is probably two to three X more than what's on here. Okay. And I don't think I could physically pull this apart, but I, but it's just, it's really lightweight stuff. This says www.efencepro. Efence Pro. Yeah, I found this on Amazon as well. And to me, it's just worth the extra money. It comes with a 500 foot spool. This is 500, that's another good analysis there. This is 500 feet versus 500 feet. Wow. We'll put this on our Amazon store as well, if you're interested. W what brand of system you're using? So I went with the Pet Safe brand because okay. they've been around a long time and I've had good luck with them and okay. no issues. So since this is family, for family, I didn't want to have any problems. Neil's done about 75 of these things. Yep. So I think that's far enough for me to endorse without ever doing one. <laughs> so we'll put both the pet safe and this uh, heavier wire at our Amazon store, amazon.com slash shop slash tractor time with Tim if you're interested in this system. The system we bought was for a little dog because their dog is about 12 pounds. Okay. So they make a little dog system and then they make a normal sized dog system so doesn't shock as hard i guess or what's the, the collar is just better fitting for the oh, small it's little just the neck. collar difference yeah, mostly the collar difference okay and the static correction may be lesser static i haven't tested correction. them all. i it's, like that static correction you got to use the technical these are all industry that terms. sounds much nicer than shock <laughs> static correction <laughs> we're going to persuade the dog not to leave the yard very softly okay so now we're going to do a trick we're going to go out here and in order for the 
wire to reach the perimeter without shocking the dog where you want where this wire is buried in the ground we're going to twist two wires together oh i and wondered I'll, how that works i'll show you a trick for doing that when you don't buy twisted wire okay okay you just start twisting with me i'm what? kidding i got a better way what spins in a hurry real fast a drill he had me I mean, I don't know if you saw, I actually started twisting. I thought, boy, this is, <laughs> this is bad. Yeah, we'll make it a little easier. I just need you to hold on to that end. That's pretty tight down here. Okay, that's pretty tight. It's all I can do to hold it. Okay. And then I'm gonna hook it on here with a piece of wire that I have in my pocket. And I'm gonna spool that up. So now what I'll do is I'll pull that out into the building, and then okay. we can set our plow down in the ground and it's all spooled up, ready to lay okay. cable. We're gonna get to the tractor time, Tim. Yeah, we gotta <laughs> have some tractor time. I'm giving it a little bit of slack so that it's not too tight. Slack lets it come and go and not get caught, caught in the ground. My only task is to end up in that hole. Yes, you gotta end up in the hole. If I fail at that task, he's gonna send me home. <laughs> so now we're gonna start our perimeter loop and we've kind of mapped out with the homeowner how they would like the system to be around the outside of the house. We're gonna create a zone in the front part of the house and then another zone in the back part of the house. We're gonna actually use the physical border, the physical structure of the house to create part of the perimeter. Yeah, that's fascinating. Yeah, so this transmits a signal up to 10, 12 feet from the wire and as long as we get the wire close to the house, the signal will intersect the house and then the dog can't get through, okay. even when it looks like an open space. You know, I was really surprised, I mean, even at an idle. I guess I expected, I expected to have plenty of engine because after all it is Brutus. Right, Brutus. <laughs> but I, I expected the wheels to want to slip and, yeah. you know. It, pull, it'll pull it as deep as it can go and it, it won't spin out for the wow. most part. Until you hook a root and then the front wheels will come off the ground. Uh oh. So hold on for that. <laughs> Good. Can raise it up a little bit. There you go. We're not trying to show you every individual step of doing a DIY invisible dog fence because we know Neil is going to be publishing a video on his channel showing this exact same project, only he's going to be showing step by step. So we'll focus on the tractor time. Visit Co dig drive DIY to get all the details. Now how far out do you think we want to run here? Out there or? Straight through there is fine. Like the direct TV pole there? Yeah, like on that side of the pole. Three roots. I hope it's going to get worse. You can lift it up a little bit. There you go. Down. Good. Felt like a big one. Yeah. Good. There you go. That's that's perfect how you did that. Okay. There you go. There you got it. That's fine if it's just below the surface. Okay. Now when you get to the concrete, just get to it. Pick up. up and keep going? Yeah, and put it back down. I don't know how accurate I am here. That's okay. You don't have to be right on. I'm going to be, though. Okay, yep. 
One across. Go ahead and pull beyond the sidewalk and I'll dig a little starter hole for you. Okay. Well, this is definitely a unique tractor usage. I can't argue with that, Neil. <laughs> it's unique. You weren't cheating on the, uh, on the application. Good. I sent that quite a while ago. I'm glad that we're, I'm glad that you read, read that email. Good point. We've got several of these and we do know about them. We did miss some of them this spring. They said that they wanted us in the spring and we, we lapsed a little bit. But some of them were way out west. Oh, really? Yeah, so it, it was, you know, the, the location for us wasn't necessarily so easy. Fortunately, this wasn't too far. Right. If you have a unique tractor application and you want us to come visit you and show us, show it on our channel, you can go to tractortimewithtim.com slash visit me. Fill out the application there. Tell us as much as you can about you know, your application and, and, you know, just how you use your tractor in a unique way that other folks might be interested in. Let us know where you are, what time of year would be suitable to visit, um, and who knows, we might make a visit to your place. That's a big one. I can feel it pulling on it. Go ahead and pick up on it. Yeah, a little more. There you go. Perfect. Yep. Out of wire. Oh, do you want me to cut closer or are you going to have to splice? Uh, I'm going to have to splice. Okay. It doesn't take a very big circle to be 500 feet, nope. does it? Okay, stop. Okay, lift it straight up. Okay, you can pull ahead out of the way. Okay. Deep enough there? Uh, yeah, we're deep enough. Head for that hole. Coming up a little bit. There you go, a little bit more. Very good. Keep going a little bit. A little bit more. Good. Lift up. Is it up all the way? Yeah. Okay. Good, I'll cut you off. Okay. I'm gonna run over the trench a little bit here with the tractor. It'll kind of pack it back down a little bit, get it a little more smooth. So this this is Izzy. Izzy. And Izzy's the reason we did all this work today. That's right. This little dog. They want to take care of her and make sure she can't get to the road or any any risks that might lurk out in the deep parts of the yard. Yeah, yeah, she's a cute little thing. Good natured. Tell me a little more about Johnny here. This would probably compare to an X700 series today. Could be, yeah. Back then the 300s were way more tractor than what the, the smaller tractors, or the tractors of equivalent size are today. But Yeah, so they were the 318 and then, and then the 400 series came next. Yep. And they were kind of a replacement, right? Well, they were out at the same time. There was a 400 series that were in conjunction with these as well. So the okay. 420 was yeah. a gas-powered Onan as well, or some people say Onan. Uh -huh. And then there was the 430, which is a Yamar diesel. And they were available at the same time as, uh, well, through, through the production years, there, were, there was some overlap that you could get either one. Okay, so this was intended to be smaller than the 400 series, or Correct. was it just an earlier? They're smaller. Okay. The 300 is smaller than the... 400 so that's it's actually quite a unique tractor then for today because uh it's got a three-point hitch yep it, it it's got the more powerful engine and transmission and all yeah. and so it, it it's capable of pulling yeah. you're not going to destroy the transmission on this thing by pulling this little no these are on it i've put these to quite the test and this has been a real test on it too pulling through the roots you experience some of those roots yeah and i put so much weight on them that it can barely spin the tires so it's putting all the power there and Brutus and he just he just keeps pulling through so and they even had these tractors had rear PTOs available too so you could run a power tiller and a PTO driven three-point tiller 
good good tractors. Amazing. It's wanting to go backwards now. Yep. But so be it. <laughs> We're almost done. Hey, Neil, I, I appreciate you inviting us up here. Hey, I really appreciate you coming. That was a that was some work getting those loops done up around the house, so I appreciate all the, the effort on the shovel for yeah, me. And this is definitely a unique tractor application. Yeah. I would say this is unique, and uh, I I was really surprised. I, I've seen you use this 316, and I think you've got another 318. Yeah, I got a couple other 318s. Bill. Some Bill. Brutus. Bill, Bill. Brutus, and uh, my 755s aren't named yet. Okay, well, you got to get on that. I got to work on that. <laughs> But I've seen you using this thing, uh, pulling a pull-type box blade, and I mean, it, it's it's amazing what a workhorse we've got. Folks, if you haven't uh, seen Neil's channel, it's Kof Dig Drive DIY, and Kof is K-O-C-H. Don't worry, your, your, your grammar teacher trying to teach you how to spell that, uh, just give up on that. It's the German phonetic pronunciation of it, <laughs> I think. Kutch. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor Time, time with, with Tim. Tim. We are we'll done. We'll see you, Izzy. You would hate me if you knew what I just did. Yeah. Before we get out of here, Neil. Yeah. I've got to hear you play the drums. <laughs> I don't know if you do or not. <laughs> yeah, I've got to. You're supposedly in a band. You're the next. Uh, I'm, yeah. The well, next. Uh, I got to try to think Don of a Henley. drummer. Oh, is that who you are? No. <laughs> He's the drummer for the Eagles. Maybe. Oh, is he? He plays and sings. Yeah. And you get more. You need more cowbell. More cowbell. <laughs>